Hi guys and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Moore Show. Now I'm currently traveling the United States of America and I was just in Colorado and I got chance to interview an astrologer, Aura Wright. It was a fascinating interview about all things astrology. So enjoy my interview with Aura. So, Aura Wright, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, I'm happy to be here. Um, do you know what, this was a kind of a bit of a random interview. <laughs> I met you whilst in, I'm in Colorado right now, right. Uh, just traveling through the States, and um, you do astrology. That's right. And I love astrology. There's so much depth in astrology. Astrology actually on YouTube is one of, it's a big, big topic. Yeah. And, and how long have you been in astrology for? Well, I started learning astrology when I was nine. So I've really been like, it's been a lifetime of astrology. My stepmother was an astrologer, so she started teaching me and she had these books and I started pouring through them. I was so fascinated with astrology that I, and they, you know, I wanted to say how it's going to kind of date me because at the time computers weren't around to do charts for us. So we did them ourselves and they had formulas and they taught you how to do the formulas to to figure out the exact positions of every planet. And I learned all that math and I did my own chart and I did other people's charts and I drew the charts and I figured out how to do that. And it was really kind of fun. And you know, I mean, it's really cool that I had that experience. Now, anybody who wants to learn it can just go type it into the computer, but there's really something special about getting to know the, the symbols of astrology and the glyphs and writing them. And it becomes part of you, it becomes a part of your consciousness in a way that I don't think you get when you're on, on the computer, but you know, I'm old school. <laughs> So like come from that world, you know, Absolutely. so she, yeah, she taught me a lot so, too because yeah. she, she was such a good astrologer. Wow. So, so, I mean, what, what was there, what sort of books did you read? I mean, what sort of authors were they? I, mean, I can't remember. I think it was something, you know, it was something like the beginner's guide to astrology. It was this big workbook and it made it pretty easy to do, even yeah. though astrology is incredibly complicated and it's got these, you know, these depths to it, but it gave us, it gave just sort of like the beginning overview of like each planet and the symbolism of the and the, the planet and the the goddess the greek god or goddess that was attached to that planet and the myth that that god was about and like you know eventually learned all those myths and um how they inform the personalities of the signs but there's a difference between the signs and the planets so every planet has its own greek god that's attached to it, Greek and Roman. They just have different names in the Greek versus Roman pantheon. But so like Pluto, which, you know, is it's a debate whether it's a planet or it's not a planet, you know, poor Pluto, I mean, he'll always be a planet to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, because he operates in a planetary way in people's charts. So, you know, I learned all that and the, the, the signs and the stories, you know, that are basically how we learn. Humans learn through stories. So it was fascinating to me to learn all that when I was young. And it's a life study. You know, the more life experience you have, the more you put it in context with what you know, and then the, it grows and it evolves. So, so how old is astrology, would you say, if you're going to date it? I think astrology is as old as man. I think that as soon as man stepped out of the cave and saw that the moon was getting larger, you know, and then they noticed that the, what's well, something about the crops or that the fish were biting and there was more harvest during the full moon, that that was the beginning of astrology. You know, I mean, our country was founded, I mean, this country, America, had a lot of astrology in its founding. Um, George Washington was actually quite a good astrologer. He started a book called The Farmer's Almanac, which has been used up until this day and predicts, you know, plant, good planting times based on the moon and things like that. So astrology is a very much alive and well for a very long time. And, and how accurate is it normally? Is it, it's pretty accurate, isn't it? Well, astrology is perfect it's the interpretation that may or may not be accurate right so it's the the astrology is as good as the person reading the astrology information and it's as accurate as the amount of information that you have and i actually practice a, a kind of astrology that i call 4d astrology which uses a lot more information than normal astrologers so there's a, there's western astrology there's vedic astrology there's all these different schools there's chinese astrology which is an entirely different thing which i love but it's not what i practice there's all these schools of astrology, but you know, the kind of astrology that most people in the Western world are familiar with are these pie shaped map, you know, these maps of the circus, like a pizza that's cut into 12 slices. And that's a, a chart, right? Well, that's not really how the planets are in the sky, right? That would just be like a flat map with this, with the earth at the center of that wheel. Okay. That's yeah. what that map is when you get your birth chart. Mm -hmm. However, all those planets are not sitting on a flat plane. They go up and down in relationship to the elliptic, which is how the 
the Earth goes around the Sun. So those planets actually have places that they exist in the declinations. It's called declinations, where they go up and down in relationship to the ecliptic, and they make relationships with each other that way too. So planets can be in conjunction in a person's chart, but they could also be in eclipse, which would be where they're not just in the same sign. They could be in the same sign, and one's up here and one's down there. They're not eclipsing. But if they're sort of in the same, you know, if you have X, Y, and Z axis, they've got two of the axes are in the same place, so now it's an eclipse. You can't be all three, because they'd be exploding into each other. So the uh, so now we have actually got two dimensions going on with the charts, but mm. those charts are still only just with the Earth at the center, which makes sense. We live on Earth; <laughs> that's where we're born. But the Sun is the center of our solar system, and so there's another kind of chart called heliocentric chart where you use the Sun as well. So I look at the flat chart, the declinations, the heliocentric chart, and the declination, the you know the declinations of the sun as well. So I'm looking at four times as much information as most astrologers, and that's why it's so accurate what I do. Wow, that, uh, yeah, yeah, and there's a, you know someone that's not you know that that has appreciated astrology, but is not ov obviously his full time job, right? Right. Yeah. There's a lot to take in what you've just said there. Yeah, I know it. And it is really complicated what I look at. I mean, if you saw the charts I looked at, you'd be like, well, you can make sense of it because there's just so many lines going everywhere. But um, I've learned that basically you look at very specific things. It's all about aspects and it's all about timing. And there's very specific things that you look for for good timing and for challenging timing. Like, you know, Saturn aspects are things to be really wary of when you're getting the exact Saturn aspects, like within three days you just really want to be extremely careful, you know, and there's difficult challenges that come up whenever Saturn is giving you trouble. And that happens in people's charts. And we can see the time that that's happening. And during those times, you don't want to sign contracts. You don't want to open bank accounts. You don't want to get married. You don't want to do important things. You want to date with someone you like, you know, it's like those things will not work out well if they're being governed by a big Saturn aspect. But there are beautiful aspects and a lot more of the beautiful aspects than the bad ones that will lead to a lot of good harmony and you know good experiences in your life so one of the things i do is i do marriage selection dates for people and dates for incorporating starting a business things like that because the date that something happens is the is like it's it's the most important day because anything that ever happens to that entity whether it's a person a place or a thing will be governed by that chart okay so the time that that thing came into existence and um, speaking of which, actually, I have um, an article that I'm putting out about the real birthday of Bitcoin because the white paper for Bitcoin came out on October 31st, 2008. But I don't consider that the birthday of Bitcoin because that was the white paper is like a conception date. It was just an idea. It didn't exist yet. They all went through like the blockchain and they had to mine the first block. And there's all these dates you know, along the road to Bitcoin becoming what it is. In the process, Bitcoin created a whole bunch of new industries, blockchain, the cryptocurrency exchange industry, the wallet industry. Um, there's all these different things. But there is a date that I consider the birthday of Bitcoin. And I go through an article where I explain why I think the date is the date that it is. And I'll give you that link so you can put it in the yeah, description. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that in the description of the video, yeah. Because I think it's one of the most important things that has ever happened in humanity is the creation of Bitcoin. It's going to be huge to all of us within the next couple of years. It's already been massive, but it's going to be so much bigger. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> Side no, it's all fascinating how you, even with Bitcoin, you can tie, you know, the astrology to that and, and, oh, yeah. and, and what it means. So um, I'm guessing, you know, you can ask questions to a reading as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Well, that's called horary astrology. You can actually, well, you, well, there's two ways to ask questions. You just schedule a reading and then I look at those things and give you answers based on those those things. Oh, so you can send the questions up front. Yeah, yeah. usually I do that when I do a, a reading with a client. Mm -hmm. um, my readings are 90 minutes long. They're longer than most astrology sessions because I look at so much and because I and because I want to break it down and give time to everything. Mm -hmm. So especially the first time I see someone, I want to spend a half an hour talking about their chart and what yeah. their talents are and what their challenges are and what I can see in, in terms of the timing, just their life timing right. in their chart. And then um, I'll spend a you know, a half hour on a relationship if they want me to look at a relationship or timing of things that are going, like I usually split up the other hour and like the end is sort of whatever questions they might have, or whatever they want me to go into. But I also spend a lot of time 
preparing a chart so I get all the stuff that they want me to look at, you know, and I make sure that I do a really thorough look. So if someone's going to come to you to get their reading and they want it to be about their partners, you know, about their the relationship, relationship yeah. they'll need the other person's? Yes. So if I'm doing that kind of a, char char a reading, I'll do like a half hour on their chart, half hour on the partner chart, half hour on the relationship and questions, you know, or, you know, maybe a little less than half hour on the partner. But, you know, because I want to make sure that there's plenty of time for the, for the questions and for the dynamic yeah. of the relationship, yeah. because there are certain aspects that, you know, if you, for a soulmate relationship, certain aspects have to be there. You cannot have a soulmate relationship without them. There are certain aspects that are like somebody who could just ruin your life. There are aspects that are, um, you know, like sort of that like um, sexual, like fantasy thing that goes nowhere, you know, and that, like- Just like a lust kind of, they, yeah. Certainly there are mm -hmm. aspects that are just lust mm -hmm. for a hot fling, you know, mm -hmm. there are ways that you can have that with somebody where it won't ruin your life. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot, of, lot yeah. to astrology because those relationships can, can be toxic, you know, you don't want that either. So there's a lot of value. And also for business partnerships, there are um, aspects that will tell you you have like these golden aspects where you guys can make mm. fortunes together, mm. you know, and you want to know if you have something with somebody that could betray you. You know, these are things that come up in businesses. And if we are prepared and we time it right, we can really make the most of the really good things that, that, yeah. are, um, that are there. Um, speaking of that, actually, um, I was at Anarchapulco in February and I did a couple of inter interviews there and I, I don't mean to bring it all back to crypto, but um, that particular event that I was at had some, during that time, that February time frame, had mm -hmm. some really beautiful aspects and I was thinking, whoever people who are meeting here, people who are forming businesses here, people who are starting things up based on that connections yeah. there, it's, those are going to be some beautiful partnerships. There are going to be some amazing seeds mm -hmm. of things that are going to grow out of just that particular event, mm -hmm. right? Because I looked at it because I went to it. So there's, there's times when some of those things come together and they're not that common when we get those really beautiful sort of alignments that give us these great grand trines and we get like really like Uranus and Jupiter or Pluto and Jupiter together or, um, you know, some of the really good aspects, Chiron, Pluto, Chiron and Venus and Pluto, you know, all these things that can lead to a lot of money that can lead to great, um, you know, things that are good for the collective that are working together, you know, with power and bringing things together to, yeah. for the, for humanity in a good way. Yeah. So there are most, there are far more good aspects than bad aspects, but we do have to watch out for the stuff that Saturn does, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just so I know we get this as an audience as well. Um, when, when you have a reading with you or mm -hmm. any astrology reading, yeah. what are the key things you need from those people? So you've got the questions, but... Yeah, well, you have to have their, their name, yeah, <laughs> their yeah. birth date, um, the time of birth. Although, you know, I've been pretty good at rectifying people's charts when they don't know their birth date, birth time. But you, I can also do it based on the noon chart because I focus more on aspects than I do on the signs. So right. the signs are a lot of stories about your consciousness and there's a lot of reading that people can do online about the signs and what it means to have, you know, Venus in the third house and that you need to communicate and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that your values are all about communication and mm -hmm. self-expression. Mm -hmm. But when I'm focusing on the aspects, I can tell you very specifically timing when things that will work for you or that will what not work for you or what kind of alignments you're going to have with other people because it's about the aspects. So do you need the time of your date of birth as well? The time. But if I don't have the time, I can do noon is what I'm saying because I focus on aspects and then the time and the place, the location where you're right. born. And some people sometimes don't know some of these things. Well, no, that's And, awesome and I can yeah. still do their charts, right? As long as they know the day that they were born. Yeah. And, you know, th they can give me whatever name they want. It doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> i got to call you something. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, so just to say this as well. Now, um, if people want to get in contact with you to get a reading, there's an email address for them sure. to email yeah, you? Sure, yeah. They can reach me at Astrology Chick, which is my logo. You know, it's just, it's, that's my brand, Astrology Chick. And I've, I've been on various TV shows. I used to write for the Yogi Times and mm -hmm. things like that. I told you, you know. The, yes. Do you want me to tell you the shows I was on? Oh, yeah, please, yeah. Um, I was on Entertainment Tonight, TV Guide Network, uh, um, Chelsea Lately Show, which was really funny, actually. <laughs> I really enjoyed doing that. Um, she was great, super nice. Um, I, w I did uh, stuff for OK Magazine, In Touch Magazine, um, a couple of others, uh, Zinc Magazine, um, and I wrote for the Yogi Times regularly. I wrote for um, findbliss.com and um, 
Um, gonna blank on the other one, but well, anyway. kind of big names. Yeah, yeah a yeah, lot of a yeah. lot of different things. But um, and and I still, I mean, I'm about to restart my astrology column, so I have a subscriber base. So if you want to be on that, just email me at astrologychick.com. Just email astrologychick. It's all one word: astrology c h i c k chick at gmail.com, and I'll put you on the list. I have a. I have a form. I can probably put that in your thing. Yeah, Actually, we'll, that might be we'll put that email link in the description as well. Mo mo but I have a form to my um, Mailchimp, so that right. they can just sign up. Actually, below okay. the we'll video that, will be we'll put, easier. Put that in the description below, and it's just coming up on the screen right now as a lower okay. third as well. Okay. So, um, okay, uh, incredible, incredible. Now, now, I mean, what what are the limitations of astrology? Then, would you say? Well, you can't see what you're not looking for or you don't know to look for, right? There's that. There's just always you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I think that astrology basically, it it's the divine clock. It's like God's clock that God gave us. It's divine timing. So it, the limitations are really our own. It's really how well we can interpret it, how well we can use what's there. And I, and I do my best to to translate a lot of really complicated information to somebody in a way that they can use it and understand it. So, you know, limitations come in the flow of communication between of humans, course. you know, and yeah. the, the best that we can do is to do everything we can to communicate mm -hmm. everything we know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. is impossible. <laughs> but you can tell I, I'm trying to communicate a lot at once. Oh, no, no, there's a lot, <laughs> there's just, a lot to be said in such a short yeah. amount of time there really yeah. is. And, and, and when I say limitations, I guess what I mean is, um, we still have the free will to change. Once we've had a reading, we still have the free will to go down the direction oh, we sure. want to. And sometimes we do change the outcome. Yeah, yeah, yes and no, right? So here's the thing. Like, um, all right, um, I, was, I was writing for the Topanga Journal. I was writing for a magazine. I, and maybe it wasn't them who had this experience, but I was writing for a magazine. And I started writing them in 2006, 2000, you know, 2006 about the housing crisis coming. Right. And that that it wasn't just astrology, right? There was like logic involved too. It was quite obvious. I was living in LA, house prices were completely out of control from my point of view because it, they just were, right? It didn't make any sense. I couldn't see how, because I worked around people who made really good money and I knew that most of these people, even though they had houses or had upgraded their houses, I knew that they still couldn't even keep in with what, what was going on. And, but also just the numbers with Fannie Mae and, and Bernie Mac, which are the biggest mortgage companies, I, I knew that if one of them went out, then it would take out our whole economy because it was so much money in the, in the mortgage industry. Yeah. So I was writing about it. And I also, the summer before the collapse, there was a Venus retrograde um, in August, the, about six months before the actual big meltdown in the early of 2007. And I was writing about how that Venus retrograde, in, I, I, it was affecting the money industry. It was affecting the mortgage industry. And during that time, I actually attended an event where it was all mortgage um, brokers, all people who worked in the mortgage industry. And there was supposed to be, I think, a thousand people there and only 400 showed up because they had right. all gone out of business. Wow. They had all, I mean, except for like maybe 20% of the industry had mm -hmm. collapsed before the market collapsed for the rest of the world. So for the rest of the country, really, like in January. Well, it did some ripple, ripple effects around the world as well. Yeah. It did, yeah, yeah. But it really, here in the United States, we felt it in January. Oh, and then God. for the next couple of I, years. I remember coming over and seeing the homes in, when I was driving through Vegas just being and, half oh, complete. Those crazy yeah, ghost towns that were yeah. inhabited by rats and cockroaches, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's all the only people who could afford so, it. So you predicted there was a prediction. I was a prediction that, 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 the, that the mortgage industry was going to, I didn't, know exactly what it would look like, but that the housing market was so really that's an scary. example that, you know, we these, couldn't have stopped it at that point. It was a train. It, yeah. There was yeah. no way to stop it. But right? it wasn't precise. It, it, it wasn't, it, it happened just a little bit further from there. You could have prepared yourself. I had right. clients who sold their house in Topanga at the top of the market and got out, right? Mm. I told them this doesn't look good. And he's like, mm. we're thinking about going back to Brute. Yeah, I think mm. that's a great idea. Mm. You know, I think right, you'll be yeah. happier if you do. <laughs> I think they were. <laughs> but, you know, we all, we also, there are karmic things that go on in people's lives that I, nobody can stop, right? That there's lessons that we have that we came here to learn. And I might, and if we have a Saturn period coming up, and everybody has Saturn periods in their life, if I see, you know, Saturn, you know, I, like I'm going to give an example, a friend of mine, I said Saturn was going to go over her son and she was going through troubles with her marriage. I was like, that's when mm. you guys are going to 
really have it out, right? That's when the issues are going to come to the surface. And some things that were not known came to the surface at that time. And it was really sort of like, she could have stayed in. She could still choose to stay. She could choose to leave. It's up to her. But all this stuff comes up and we get to see it crystal clear, which actually brings me to the fact that we have a lot of planets in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn right now. So what is going on right now with the astrology? Well, first of all, we have six planets retrograde. Like everything that could be retrograde, like the sun and the moon never go retrograde. They can't. There's only two planets of all the planets that could go retrograde that are not retrograde. And that's Venus and Jupiter. Those are the only two that aren't retrograde. Everything else is retrograde. Mercury is just now changing directions. It's in its station direct, so it's going to turn direct in, within the next 48 hours, okay? Which is actually a really powerful time for us to be talking and for put information out into the world. Mm. It's a really, it's a powerful time to start any kind of communication venture because mm -hmm. Mercury rules communication. Mm -hmm. When it's station direct, it kind of guarantees that the energy will kind of like be strong and be super long lasting and kind of really solid, okay? Yeah. When the re I mean, I have a video about Mercury retrograde that's on my channel. My channel is actually Sleep Woke. It's not Astrology Chick, but my YouTube channel is Sleep Woke. Every place else, I'm Astrology Chick. So I'm Astrology Chick at at yours dot dot org. I think it is is yours. Yours is the Bitcoin Cash website where I have a prediction for for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and what's going to happen with them. Um, but then like on Twitter, which is where I put all my videos, I'm Astrology Chick. So people can find me usually as Astrology Chick. Um, but all this stuff being ruled by Saturn and all these retrograde planets, we are kind of, it's like a, it's like a repeat, a psychological repeat on the collective level. We are dealing with ancient karma now, and there's some really deep old stuff that as a collection of humanity, we all have to cope with. And um, Mercury is in Leo. It's not in Capricorn. It's not being governed by Saturn. Everything else, I mean, not everything else is governed by Saturn, but a lot of them are because Mars and, um, Ju and Saturn is in Capricorn and Pluto is in Capricorn. So this is like a lot of Mars is like war and aggression and action. And, Pl and Pluto is, is also war, but it's on like the collective consciousness and the, the group stuff that rules all of us as a collection. It's, it's also like mortgages. It's actually um, our shared um, drives and collective consciousness, the deep id as a collective of humanity, some of the, where the deepest, darkest stuff lives. And Saturn is... Um, you know, is the big tough teacher. It's the big mean, you know, guy on the, <laughs> the, the god of the of mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. of the of the mm -hmm. of the gods, basically yeah, the yeah. king of the gods. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that's being ruled by Capricorn because Capricorn is Saturn is in Capricorn. It's Capricorn on top of Capricorn in retrograde in like deal with your karmic. S H I T mm -hmm. right before mm -hmm. it hits the fan is really what all this is about. It's like people's problems are going to come into a really, they're going to become very acute um, right now. And as a collection, collective problems, things, that's why it seems like everyone's so mean all the time, like online, you've got all these trolls all over the place and it's been going on, it's been building. And it's just all of these things we've put off dealing with, like how we talk to each other, how we deal with each other as humans. Are we truly living from a spiritual place of, you know, kindness, or are we slipping into unconsciousness and just mm -hmm. like demanding or trying to control things or want things our way? And um, just uh, really all of that stuff is is up for people. It's just uh, a lot of stuff. And how long does that last for? All of them are different times, different time frames, right? Everything stays retrograde for a different period of time. But Mercury changes directions in two days. Mars, it will be a couple more weeks. The other planets are slower. You know, they're all slower. Like, um, I don't remember when Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto changed directions off the top of my head, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm not a calculator. Mm -hmm. But I will say that we are in a major turning point right now, like this summer and into the fall, as things are turning around, we're going to start to see a lot of major shifts coming in through the end of this year. Um, and what I will say is that because Mercury is, um, uh, it's following the sun and it's in Leo and, and the sun is, Leo is, you know, ruled by the sun. So mm -hmm. it's all about, it's about the president. It's about the king. It's about the leader. It's about the ruler. It's about 
as individuals, all of us, it's about our ego, our identity, and our right to have an ego or an identity or our over ego or just coping with ego issues of someone else's ego or whatever. So, so we may have had, we've been having ego issues hanging out there ahead of Mercury, right? So Mercury's going back and forth and setting up some sort of deep lessons about personality and ego and ego temper tantrums and people throwing their weight around and bullies and all of that. And Mercury is, is now turning direct again. And for the next few weeks, it's going to catch up to the sun because Mercury moves much faster than the sun. Yes. And it's yeah. going to catch up to what the sun has been doing. So a lot of unraveling of mysteries and information and communication is going to start to happen for the next three weeks. And we're going to start to get an understanding of what the confusion has been for the past three weeks, right? Things have been really confusing. There's been a lot of confusing, like, sort of double speak. I mean, not just, it's been longer than three weeks. But and that's in many different communities, not just our community. Every, that's, that is a general yeah. universal theme yeah. that we're yeah. dealing with as humans. Like yeah. if we were to look at what's going on with Trump, people are like, what the hell is he saying? Like, I mean, people have been like that forever, but there is, you know, is he saying it? Like, is he man, being mean? Is he outsmarting the system? I mean, everyone has a different philosophy about why he talks the way he does, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to understand. But there's also a lot of other communities where people have been throwing their weight around or have made a big stink or have said something that probably shouldn't have been said or might not have been true and things that are being, and, and people are like, I don't know what to believe. And that's Mercury, right? Isn't that happening even in our community right now? Yes, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. And so there, and there's a lot of misinformation in the um, metaphysical community, a ton of stuff that's like just a good story to tell. You know, I mean, look, it's media. Media is mercury. Media just says what needs to be said in order to sell a story because they want eyeballs, right? You can create clickbait. You can create a sensationalistic story. We could, we could label this, this video, you know, astrology saves your life. And like, you know, it's the life or death astrology. Yeah. And people will watch it, but that's not necessarily the most conscious person, and it's not the message I'm trying to send. No. So, you know, we do have a responsibility to our thoughts and to how we use our words and the things that we think as well. I mean, I totally agree. You know, and so the manifestations of some of that, like not communicating with integrity, not communicating from the heart, not communicating from a spiritual place. Mm -hmm are all going to be really unraveling over the next three weeks. And then some of those BS lies things are going to come out. I mean, I have a really good friend who's been accused of some horrible things of, of like, you know, trying to kill someone. And this is something that she would never do, right? But the reality of that will come out. And that the people who have accused her of that, who have made her look that way, will start to look bad themselves. And you know this could I'm be saying? like generalized in other people's lives in different ways right now. Of course. Someone yeah. might be falsely yeah. accused. Yeah. Someone yeah. might deserve to be accused and yeah. have not been. And yeah. like the, yeah. the, the pot calling the kettle black, the worm yeah. turns. Yeah. Yeah. We start to see who's really, you know, yeah. in the light and who isn't. So, so how long does this last for them? Just remind me of that. Well, then. this particular Mercury cycle, yeah. well, you know, Mercury is retro... Is, one part of the Mercury cycle is always happening at like half the time of the year. So Mercury, Mercury yeah. goes retrograde. The cycle lasts mm -hmm. six weeks. Okay. Okay. It's and the retrograde ends in two days, but we have a shadow, which is the cleanup period where it catches up to itself, where it goes back over the degrees that it went retrograde over. Yeah. So there's two weeks after the retrograde where we're still cleaning up the mess. So when you look back on uh, Trump winning the, the the presidency. Did you, was it something to, that you predicted? Cause no. No. In fact, I was really confused by the whole, uh, I'm, I'm human. Because there was many astrology readings that came online at that time. I wasn't writing at that time and right. I wasn't making any predictions. I, I had actually stepped out of the business for a while because of, I had a kid and, you know, mm. it was, I just needed to take but, care but of my But kid. it was confusing for you. I, I, thought, I found the election really confusing mainly because... I look at things really deeply and I was very confused by the conflicting narratives that the facts didn't add up on either right, side. Right. And I started digging and what I ended up doing is not voting for either candidate, right? A lot of people did do that. Yeah, yeah because yeah. I, I voted for Jill Stein because I'm like, yeah. we need another party, we need something else. Yeah, yeah. And um, because the official narrative about Trump was just like horrifying and then I couldn't figure out what was true or not. And th there's all this stuff that made me feel unsafe as a woman about what he was, but what I was getting, you know, and I lived in a very liberal state. I was living in California and 
I've since come to really recognize a lot of, so the thing is I think both parties don't see how their beliefs are manipulated against them, right? And how they're being used and manipulated by both parties in the system, which is why I'm saying we need something entirely different. Central people who care about the well-being of families and children and a good life and community and all the good values that we actually have. And I don't think either one of these parties care but about then, that. Is, isn't that a perfect example of what we just spoke about yes. just a bit earlier on where actually, you know, when something karmically needs to happen, it's not always on the table that that's going to happen because right. we need to go through the process of that without well, some, not everything is going to be uh, shown to us, is it? That's what I'm saying. That's right. We yeah. have to go through what we don't know in order to learn what we need to see in order yeah. to recognize what was missing. Like, yeah. like I said, I went through that. I was really confused by the, conf the mm. whole political landscape mm. made mm. me dig deeper and see things that I really didn't like mm. about the Democratic Party mm. and like the mm. things, the lies that I was mm. able to pull apart about that. And like, and, and I can already see them in the Republican Party and I was like, okay, this is crazy. But, but then when you look back, if you were to look back at the astrology now, mm -hmm. could, would it, could you make sense of it a bit more? I'm sure I could. Yeah, yeah I'm right, sure right. I could. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I was not doing a lot of that. I was my focused a lot on filming at of the course. time. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's a lot of time no, just on a, everything. Just, I know yeah. that was, a, when, yeah. when I used to look at the astrology videos in that period, it was just, it, it was hard to predict yeah. even that, yeah, yeah. because and that karmic stuff that was involved. Exactly, and sometimes when our own stuff gets in the way, we can't say anything. And I, I tend yeah. to, when I don't know, not talk, I just don't say anything. Right, like, right. You know, I tend to wait until I do know something to say something. But then when you're given that astrology reading, um, are you having to use sort of that, 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 that clairvoyant, that clairsentient, that that sort of spiritual gift side to read the the reading sometimes. People, people. Yeah. When I'm reading an individual, that yeah. absolutely always comes into play. Yeah, I can't like separate that from. So myself. you do have those gifts. Absolutely. I I actually started out doing psychic readings, and I even though I was an astrologer, I started working at a bookstore doing just psychic readings, and I was like, you guys need an astrologer here, and so then I was doing all the astrology readings there, but. Um, I mean, like I said, I've been doing astrology for a long time, and I'd also been doing tarot card readings and like just reading people. So, so you can sit down. I mean, because some of your readings will, will be over the phone, right? Do, sure. do you do it over Skype? Yeah, Skype yep. readings, yep. Uh, phone readings. Yep. You know, I do, I do, like, and it's nice to see people in person, but it's not necessary. No, no, you can. Yeah. So, when you give someone a reading, that that spiritual side is coming in along with the astrology. So, it's a complete kind of always, package. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. always get that as well. That's yeah. also part of it, and. You know, I know astrologers who think that they can't like ever think that they're psychic and that it's all like this logic thing and you have to just break it down by the numbers. And it's like, yeah, if you're following a system that you think is so good that you don't need any intuition to put together the the picture of right. what this person actually is and what their life pattern is. And yeah. I think we're all thumb, you know, fingerprint, we're individuals. So mm. you can't ever just there's no numbers that fit. It's exactly. No, no, it's great that you do all do all that. I think that's 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 really important. And, and, and for people that come to see you as well, I mean, mm -hmm. there must be kind of common threads. There must be kind of... Well, what I, yeah, what happens is, I mean, I, I do a lot of, I wind up healing, doing a lot of healing work with people because I wind up being able to see things on a deep level, what the karma is and the layers of it and where it comes from. And I became a hypnotherapist many years ago. And so I can work people through the hypnotherapy if they need to, to deal with stuff from past lives or clear psychic emotional blocks, because I've been through my own long healing journey, right? And I've had mm. to clear a lot of stuff for myself. Mm. Mm. And because that has made me very powerful at helping other people, because I've had to deal with some of the deepest stuff. You so, went through yeah. a tough childhood, I'll just yes, say that. Yeah. We won't talk about it right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, no, no, not no, now. No. But yeah, yeah, I did have a really hard time as yeah. a, in my yeah. childhood. Yeah. So I've had to clear a lot of really which has made you the reader you are now, right. basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I found, I found that sort of like the last level of it, of my own healing has been, and it's on a personal level, doesn't show up in readings at all, but is clearing reactions to stuff. Like my attendance, you know, yeah. having, I learned a long time about how to breathe and count and like not go through things too quickly, but to, to clear my um, attachment, you know, to situations and to people and, what, and the way they respond and what they're doing. So that has been sort of the last, because it, it's like things are really deep and they hurt you really badly when you have wounds that you haven't um, coped with and mm. you can't see why they hurt and what's going on or why it's like that. And mm. you go through layers and layers of healing until you get to where you go, okay, I'm being triggered on that thing and I know what that thing is. And now I know that, okay, I'm not going to react. And, okay, I have to like get into a space where I love myself and heal it. And, and you, I do a lot of light work and a lot of tools of meditation and things like that 
to work on myself mm -hmm. um, so I can bring them to other people and teach sure. them how to do the same stuff. No, that's a beautiful thing. And I guess no one reading is quite the same, is it? They're all, mm -mm. No, no, they're all no, everyone's no, on a different be. journey, aren't they? Right. Yeah, yeah. But, but I do like, we do get themes and there are always like, you know, things that are going on at various times. I mean, yeah. every reader gets a different, they, everyone has a reader karma, right? Mm -hmm. They have like their, mm -hmm. their niche, their thing that they do that, that's really good yeah. for people and they attract the people that need what they have to offer. Yeah, so, yeah. It, so the right people thing. will come, will come yeah. to you that, that need you, that resonate with yeah, you. And I think you've exactly. got a lovely energy and I think Thanks. you're very grounded in, 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 in what you've got to say. I noticed that with you when we was off air, you know, yeah. just a bit today as well. It's like, man, what she's saying is so true. Well, I try and stay grounded. I'm, well, I'm a Taurus. If I'm not grounded, I'm nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we know, don't we, in this community, right, there's a lot of ungroundedness. Oh, yeah. There's, like, just, you know, I recently was involved with, you know, was in contact with someone who was, you know, they're just embellishing everything. They're just adding a bunch of stuff. Yeah. There's a whole lot of, um, you know, in the metaphysical conscious community, there's just this, like, uh, you know, everyone's now, like, been alien abducted, and everyone's got this, and everyone's got, like, you know, oh, I'm talking to wood nymphs, or... And none of that is relevant or means anything unless it has some direct impact on you right now and what I'm doing how in the reading you in this with you right now and how life. to get you from where you are to yeah. where you want to be or solve a question or answer you know, a problem for you. you because know? you used to channel as well. Yeah, I've done yeah, channeling you've work. You've done all that. You've, you've yeah. covered all the subjects in a sense. And, and it just, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, 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 I came from a world where that kind of consciousness that I had, that psychic abilities that I had, was not shut down the way it is in a lot of other people because it wasn't a very square kind of world, right? Yeah, so there yeah. was, uh, you know, there was a, there were a lot, no rules, right? There was no limitation, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is its own set of problems, mm -hmm. but um, it didn't clamp me down. So as a mm -hmm. kid, I was really wide open and really psychic, and so mm -hmm. I have all these different, and then I've used my mind because mm -hmm. I like to know stuff. Mm -hmm. So I learned mm -hmm. the astrology and I did all this other technical side of it, but I believe it's a natural thing that everybody has. And I think that our society shuts us down. I think that our education shuts us down. I think that our sort of social codes and social mores and what we're allowed to be and not and talk about shut us down and keep us from expressing that stuff. And it's changing quite a bit because there's a lot more people talking about it. Exactly. We have, and we have an in actual industry for it now. Yes. And it wasn't like that before. No. So when people leave you, they leave you empowered that the answers are within all the time. Of course. That, you know, someone said to me once, and it's, it, this is a good little quote, sometimes we don't always want to clean our own house. It's sometimes <laughs> nice for someone else to do with the cleaning sometimes. Yeah, And, that's and right. it, you know, sometimes we need someone like you to help us just Well, get sometimes it. you don't know how to right, do something. Right, Because we're not educated in this. I, yeah. I believe in the future, people yeah. will know how to relate to their energetic etheric body and to, yeah. to to do the inner healing work and how yeah. to connect to their own guides and how to read what the future is likely to be in certain actions <laughs> yeah. that they yeah. take you know that yeah. we we have junctures in our life where we go in this direction and we get this set of futures in this direction we get other set of futures mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that people are going to be able to look forward in their own timelines and back in their own timelines and and heal their own past you know, we're all going to learn these skills eventually as humans. These are important things to be able to do. You know, mm -hmm. that's... Well, here's a question yeah. as well. How long do these readings sort of... What, what's the sort of length, uh, prediction for them? Are they, do they like, is it for a year? Is it for it six really months? It really depends if someone's looking for like timing. So like I was yeah. saying, when I usually do 90 minutes with someone, mm -hmm. I do like a half hour on them, a half mm -hmm. hour on whatever situation they mm -hmm. have that want mm -hmm. me to look at. And then I might go through like three months or six months mm -hmm. of timing mm -hmm. for specific things. Now... Yeah. It depends on how much detail they want. They want a lot of detail, mm -hmm. so that might be three months. If they, mm -hmm. you know, I can break it up and change it however the person wants. It really and depends on their request, of actually. Course. And, I, and yeah. I guess as well, you've also got to take into account where are they in whatever healing process they're going through. How right. lost are they in some respects that they just need a bit of guidance back? Yeah, there's you know, that. You know well, I mean? yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so I guess the better way of me to answer that question is that when I have someone come see me the first time, what I want to do is I want to spend enough time to really look at them mm -hmm. and to look at the timing of who they are and then to um, I can do and then to look at sort of the timing of what's coming up for the upcoming year as a big general picture and then I can do more ongoing stuff with people like I can break it down and give them monthly projections for timing on dates and whether they're good for things and not good for things so yeah. I can give them like a monthly like overview yeah. of 
do business this, stay away from doing business these three days, that kind of thing. So would you say then, as a soul, if we choose to come down here, we choose to incarnate, right. are we choosing the time that we incarnate, do you think? Do you think Absolutely. This, yeah. Oh my God. We, I think yeah. our souls spend a great deal of time in planning sessions with other <laughs> souls yeah. to figure out when the planets are exactly aligned for the right karmic patterns for the soul to come in and learn the exact lessons that you have chosen to learn in this lifetime and ex accomplish the exact things you came to accomplish. And, and it's crazy, well not crazy, but it's just like, wow, how, how do those, how does it, how is that something like that worked out and how is it all so connected? It's like, well, it's, it's because it's, it seems so complicated, but it's actually far more simple when it's connected because when you start to think about it, like okay, we have the seven major planets so you can see with your eyes, they correspond with the seven chakras. Mm -hmm. My astrology column at the Yogi Times was chakra astrology, because I was talking about the seven rays, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And the movements of the planets will tell us what's going on with each of these rays. And every one of us, our sun is born under one of the seven colors, one of the seven rays. And that's broadly the lesson that we're, we're here to be expressing through. So what's your sign? What sign are you? Oh, well, I'm uh, July 22nd. So you're on the cusp. You should I'm have let me cusp. do your chart. I know, I'm so I mad. know, you I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that as well. Do you know about that? <laughs> I'm going to have yeah, to do it again yeah, and look at your chart yeah. because that's, you know, you're on one side or the other, right? Yeah. So, but you're, you know, those degrees, the, the, the 29 slash zero degree of any sign are really kind of a special time because it's a changing of the guard, but you also have a little bit of both, but you will be one or the other. And they're... There's a certain like really powerful energy to them because there are the four major zero degrees, which are the season mm -hmm. changes, right? Mm -hmm. We have the mm -hmm. summer equinox, I mean the summer solstice, the winter mm -hmm. solstice, and then the two equinoxes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. actually next time on the next equinox, this is fun, <laughs> fun with astrology, is you can take an egg on the equinox and you can take it on its narrow pointy end and you can balance it only on the equinoxes, the, the fall and the spring equinox, and it will stay there until the equinox is over and it will roll over and fall over. So that's the only time of the year you can yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, so there's the gravity thing going on, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of a mystical, mm -hmm. magical thing as well. Um, but the zero degrees are important because they're about major change. Yeah, I wish, I wish, I wish I had, oh, that would have been so good okay. to share that with the audience. Uh, yeah, it's okay yeah. because, yeah. you know, we can always do like a part two and like look at your, cool, and do yeah. some, some look at your yeah. chart. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to fire yeah. it up and no, look no, at no, it. No, no, just no, pull, no, pull no. it up and you can look at my, <laughs> yeah. the, the screen and look at the software that I'm looking at. You can see that it doesn't look well, like we, normal we, stuff. We may do that. We yeah. may do that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess I want to ask you then, you know, what is the most important message that, that, that having an astrology reading will do for people, do you think? Well, I mean, it's, it, what it, well, you know, over the, the oracles at the Temple of Delphi was the, was the saying, it said, know thyself. I mean, it was in, it was in Greek, but it mm -hmm. said, know thyself. So astrology will t can show you what your strengths are and what your gifts are in this lifetime. And there's certain things that we can see just in like looking at who you are, right, that are gonna really, you know, you know, can really open some doors and, and set some some light bulbs off for people. You know, especially young people when you're like 20 and your whole job in life is to discover who you are and to try a yeah. bunch of things. It's great to get that sort of insight to help you to mold you in the direction of not what your parents want from you, not what you think society wants from you, but what is your soul trying to do here? You know, it depends on who you are, how you know, independent and individualistic, and also how supportive your parents were of your own path. But it's easier for some people to find who they are than it is for others, you know, and astrology can do a great deal to help us find who we are. Everything we are, everything we do, everything we create in our lives comes from who we are and being true to who we are. Everything is easy when it comes from who you are, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is a struggle mm -hmm. when you're trying to do something for somebody, do it another way, mm -hmm. right? For mm -hmm. somebody else mm -hmm. or conform to someone else, some mm -hmm. other expectation. So that's one, and it can also, I'm sorry, you asked me what the most important thing is. I'm like, it can tell you who you are, but it can also tell you when the right timing is for you as well. That's important. And, mm -hmm. and you know, if obviously I'm guessing that, you know, if, if you were to have a reading one year than another year, is it repeatable throughout the life or is it, does it change as, as the years go on? Well, you, you grow as a person, mm -hmm. but what happens is that every year there's something new. And, and a lot of people do have a reading on their birthday, around their birthday, because you have your solar return, right? And that's a great time to have a reading because the solar return 
is um, when the sun comes back to the place where it was when you were born. And in that particular chart, the solar return chart, is a nice snapshot of the next year. Mm -hmm. And it gives us just a lot of the good big themes that are, you'll be dealing with for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to know, right? Mm -hmm. It's just nice to know mm -hmm. that this year, you're going to have a lot of family stuff going on and there's going to be some joy around your family and it right. might not be the best career year, right? Mm -hmm. Or this year you're going to be taking on the world, you know, mm -hmm. and you'll be going flying with your career. It, but it's hard for us though, isn't it, to hear those th that feedback sometimes where it's not the right time. It's not the year that you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or <laughs> so, but I want to yeah, get married this or that, year. Or that thing that you, you want know? to launch now, whatever it is, relationship, it's, it's just not in alignment. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I can't yeah. change God's clock. You no. know, I'm just the messenger, <laughs> don't shoot me. <laughs> No, I don't try and fight with him, you know, <laughs> yeah. or her or them, you know, yeah. and like leave it up to the divine forces. And, yeah. you know, I'm here to help you work with what is, you know, and to help you not slam your head against the wall because it's less painful to stop. Absolutely. And just remind us of your email address again. It's astrologychick at gmail.com. Okay. And I'm astrologychick at Twitter. Um, I'm sleepwoke at YouTube. Astrology Chick at um, yours and also at um, Steam It if you're on Steam It. Okay, we'll link all those um, in the description as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm bringing back my astrology column. So, yes, yes, so that'll be in there as well. Yeah. That, yeah. It's I, a weekly I, column. I just want to say for the, for the small bit of time we've had here, um, you know, it's, that, it's just fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. Could and we could talk a lot longer yeah, as well. I could talk for yeah. weeks. <laughs> but, but, but I think, um, I just want to thank you for giving us the, this, this bit of time right now. Well, thank you for yeah. having me and yeah. for talking to me and giving me the chance to explain how I work. Absolutely fascinating. We well, just thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks.